You can head on to Children's Church. Adults, if you want to turn your Bibles, Proverbs chapter number 3. Proverbs chapter number 3. You know, I won't never forget um, that when I was growing up, there was a man by the name of Mr. Charles Maxwell. He worked at my granddaddy's golf course where I grew up there. And uh, one of the greatest people I've ever known in my life was Mr. Charles. Um, he's passed away now. He passed away probably 20 years ago or better. But um, And I didn't know this part. Um, about five, four or five years ago, he had a brother that served in the Korean War. Well, they found his remains, and they'd done DNA testing and was able to find the remains of his brother, and he finally got to come home. And y'all, uh, they buried him there at home in Hogansville. But it was all those years that, because um, I believe the Korean War was in the late 50s, and I hope I'm saying that right, early to late 50s, somewhere around in there. And um, all those years, though, that the parents and his brother and all those that had no idea what happened to him, they figured he had died in battle, but, um, but finally he got to come home, and what was so sad was so many of them had done passed on. But, uh, but anyway, we will never know the price that has been paid so that we can sit in here free, live free, celebrate this weekend with the freedoms we have. And, and although, I'm not saying don't have a good weekend, don't have a lot of fun, don't enjoy going to the lake and the beach or wherever you're at, but don't forget what, caught, what gave us these freedoms. Amen? Amen. With that being said, last week I told you we was going to be in Proverbs chapter 3 for a few moments or for a few weeks, and uh, last week we're, we're focusing on um, verse 4, 5, and 6 of Proverbs chapter 3. And I referenced last week a compass, that in life um, you will get lost, you will get disoriented, sometimes you won't know which way to go, which way to turn, um, and there are compasses in life that will lead you no matter what. They are true. I had referenced a boat, um, being on a boat way out in the middle of the sea and how probably the most important thing on that boat out at sea if all the electronics and the navigation and everything went out was that little 4 or $5 compass sitting on the console of that boat that would lead you back home in case you were lost. Well, in life there are those moments where you are looking for something to lead you back to get you home when you have lost your way. And I believe with all my heart right here in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, 6, and 7 is that compass of life. Let's read just those four verses, or three verses today. Um, we won't read all of it like we did last week, but let's just stick to those three verses. And remember last week we really focused on verse 1, but today we're going to focus on mainly verse 5. But let's read 5, 6, and 7 again. It says this, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Um, as you read this right here, the main thing I want to focus on right there is in verse 5. It's Trust, that word trust, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. But that word trust is where I really want to focus this morning. And I want to just tell y'all, this week, um, I know a lot of kids graduated. Some of them went from kindergarten up to first grade now. Some of them went from elementary school to middle school. But some of them um, graduated high school. And I was able to attend my niece's graduation uh, Friday night. And I sit there and I watch these young people. And um, you have the valedictorian and the class president. And then I can't remember what the other little young girl's um, class, uh, what she was in the class. But they all got up there and they begin to read and talk about life. And then they quoted all these famous people um, throughout history. And the main thing that they kept saying was, don't give up. Trust in your abilities, trust in this, trust in that, and don't give up. And as I'm sitting there listening to all of this, and don't get me wrong, they did a phenomenal job. Um, as a parent, I'd be very proud of every one of them standing up here in front of all those people. But one thing that was not mentioned throughout this whole graduation, from the superintendents to the principal to these kids to everybody that spoke, was Jesus. 
Not one single time did they pray, did they mention Jesus, did they mention church, did they mention God. Not one single time. And it broke my heart. I'm going to be honest with you. Now, I know that these are a lot of great kids. I know they have a bright future. I know they have a lot of opportunities ahead of them. But nothing in your life is more important than your relationship with Jesus. Period. End of story. And all they are up there giving their speeches and trust and trust and trust. And then here's what they were doing. And your abilities. Trust in your abilities. And I'm going to tell you right now, as I sit there and I listen to it, it really broke my heart. And it's not irony. It's, it's kind of funny that we're already right here in Proverbs chapter 3, and I told you we would be. But that the first word in verse 5 is trust in the Lord. Not trust in self, trust in the Lord. As a matter of fact, and Will, I should have gave them to you. I knew I was going to do it. Let's go to Psalms 103 for just a second, Will. Pull up, we pulled these other night in a Wednesday night Bible study. But look at Psalms. Everybody turn there for just a moment. And I hope you've got these highlighted in your Bible. Psalms 103, look at verse 13 and 14. Now, if you've ever wondered where casting or, uh, Mercy Me got that song, as far as the east is from the west, it's right there in verse 12, where it says, And as far as the east is from the west, so far hath He removed our transgressions from us. But I want to really focus on verse 13 and verse 14 for just a moment right here. Notice what He says in verse 13, first off. He says, Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear Him. And then the really thing I want you to see is this, verse 14. Notice what he says. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. Now, if I took a thousand pounds and I put it on some little bitty PVC pipe table that I just built right here, you know what it's going to do to that PVC? It's probably going to crush it. Especially if I then begin to jump up and down with all that weight on it, it will crush it. And notice right here what the Bible says about Jesus, about our, our Creator. What we were just reading with these kids, our Creator knows us. And He knows our frame. He knows what we can handle, y'all. He knows how much pressure. He knows how much trouble. He knows how much worry, how much sorrow, how much temptation. He knows what we can handle. And He realizes and He knows that even we have a breaking point. Can I get an amen? amen? Every single one of us have been tried have been pushed, have been our abilities, our mental capacity has been tried and has been pushed to the limit. And right here, the Bible teaches that God knows how much we can handle. He knows how fragile we are. You know, I said for many years, and I said it wrong, that God will never give you more than you can handle. That's a lie. You will get way more than you can handle. Have you figured that out yet? But, now let me say it the correct way. God will never give you more than you and God can handle. You see, that's the problem with the world right now. The world is trying to do everything without God. And they are falling apart. As a matter of fact, and, and y'all bear with me for just a second. Let me, let me get through this for just a minute. There has been this new phenomenon of mental health, mental health, mental health. And now I know there are mental problems. I know that. I'm not denying that. I know there's some mental issues and there's some mental health. But did you know there's always been hard times? There have been times that are trying. There have been times where things don't work out. There have been times where we fail. There have been times when the dryer goes out and it don't make no sense. And we ain't got the money to buy a new one. There has been times where cars break down, leave a stranded on side the roads. There has been times where you and the spouses have been arguing. And, and no matter what you do, it's getting worse and worse. There's been times when you couldn't pay your bills. When you didn't know when your next meal was going to come. There have been these times. And it's not mental health. It's called hard times. But it's almost like 
they're trying to say just because things aren't going your way, you have mental problems and now you have mental issues and, and it shouldn't be this way. Now, there's always been hard times and hard troubles. Now, I know, like I said, I know for a fact there are mental issues. Don't, please don't hear me. Hear, please understand that. I know there is depression. I know there is anxiety. I know all these things exist and they are real. Please understand that. But I also know that you try to walk through this world without Jesus, you're going to be lost, you're going to be hurt, you're going to be depressed, you're going to be miserable. And that's what a lot of people are doing. We live in a world where the world is most unchurched ever before. And it ain't because there ain't a church. It's because you think everything else is more important than church. It's because you think everything else is more important than Jesus Christ. And right here, God said in His own words... I know what you can handle. But I also know it ain't much. That's what he's saying. He says, I know it ain't much. I know that if you try to walk this walk without me, you will break down. You will go mentally crazy. It will be way more than you can handle. And I know that. That's why he says, trust in me. Lean on me. As a matter of fact, look what the Bible says. Let's just break this down for just a moment. Look what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 28. Notice what he says. Proverbs eleven twenty-eight 28 says, He that trusteth in his riches shall fall. Do you hear that right there? If you trust in your riches, and let's put it another way, in what you, through your hard work and your capabilities, have been able to accomplish, when hard times come, it will overwhelm what you are capable of doing, and you will fall. You know, I wanted to get on that stage so bad and tell all those young people, listen to me, you are very talented, you are very smart, you are very capable, and you have a lot of opportunity ahead of you, but you better not trust in yourself alone, in your capabilities alone. You will fall apart. Satan's job, Satan's agenda, some people say, well, what's your agenda? What is your plans? Let me tell you what the Bible says Satan's are. Kill, steal, destroy. There is no other way. Steal, kill, and destroy you. That's what he wants to do. And the Bible says that if you trust in anything that you are able to accomplish, that you are able to acquire, that you are able to do without Jesus, without God's help, you will fall. You will fall because Satan's coming after you. He's the baddest linebacker that ever played. He can tackle you. He will knock you down. He will knock you out. And you'll be looking up at the sky saying, what happened? Notice what it says. That you will fall, but the righteous shall flourish. As ever. Why are the righteous going to flourish? Because they're not just fighting. Satan's not just fighting that person. He's got to fight God too. And he knows that he don't stand a chance. Praise God. Look what the Bible goes on to say. Look at Proverbs 28, 6. Proverbs 28, 6. He that trusteth in his own heart is a what? He that trusteth in his own heart is a what? You're a fool if you think you have what it takes to walk through this world without Jesus. That's what God said, not Jonathan. Y'all know the other week I like to have a mental breakdown. Ask Amy. She's the one that calmed me back down. Yo, I got up that day, normal day, everything's going good. Dryer starts going out. Go outside to pick something out, it starts falling apart. Go outside, then she says, come on, let's just go, jump on that pontoon boat, let's go out. All of a sudden, the bracket, the, the motor mounts up on, starts breaking on me. And I about lost it at this point. I said, I'm sick of it, I can't take it no more, I'm just going to get rid of all of it, I, I can't do it no more, I'm about to blow a gasket. She said, let me preach to you for a minute. You always preaching to me and all of everybody else, let me preach to you for a minute. And she did, and she had to calm me back down. And she said, all that you tell people, trust in God, trust in God. God's going to take care of you. God's going to provide. God's going to do. 
No, you need to live it. Preacher, you know. And I'm thinking to myself, hush, I don't want to hear it, you know. But she's right. She was 110% right. I threw my little tension tantrum, and I got uh, all upset, and, and I went out. And she's back there doing this, y'all, waving at me like, yeah, I told you. But she, uh, throughout that night, and then that night, I laid down in the bed, and I said, you know, God, I said, first off, I'm sorry. I said, you've been so good to me. And I said, why would I let Satan steal my joy and my happiness and my peace when it ain't in those possessions? It's in you and it's in my wife and it's in my kids. It's in my church. Why would I let him get me so upset? So you know what I did? I just let the dryer fall apart. I let the boat fall apart. I don't got, no, no, I'm kidding. I got it fixed. <laughs> I just took them one day at a time and got it all worked out like we always do. And, but I trust God. And you know what? Every single thing that was a problem is... And you know, I, I'd sit there and I thought to myself, it, it's so easy to get overwhelmed by this world. It's so easy. Do you know we, we live at such a fast pace and we go at such a fast pace and, and it's so easy to let things build and build and build until you get to this point where you're ready to explode. And that's what's happening right here. And he says, look right here. If you trust in your own heart, you're a fool. If you trust in your own ability, you're a fool. If you trust that I can handle this and I don't need no help, you're a fool. And he says, look, but whosoever walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. What is wise? Walking with Jesus. Walking with God. Trusting in God. Notice what he goes on to say right here. Now, let's, let's take all that and let's, let's flip it. Let's go from trusting in self versus worry, mental health, versus trust God. Let's look at these verses. Look what he says. 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon Him. Because what? He careth for you. Cast all your care upon Him. Because He careth for you. Oh, I love that. Look at this next right here with me. Now this is Matthew where Jesus was addressing worry. And I have broke it down because I don't want to read all of them. I, there's other spots I want to get to this morning. But notice what He says right here in Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to go from verse 25 to verse 27 for just a moment, and then we're going to skip down to 33 and 34. But look what he says in 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, for what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor for what your body for you shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. God's saying right here, don't worry about your food. Don't worry about your clothes. I'm going to take care of you. That's what he's saying. You are more important to me. Now he goes on to say that I dress the fields with flowers. I would give the birds food and a home and shelter. Aren't you more precious and important than them? But notice what he says right here in verse 27. Which of you, by taking thought... I love this. You better highlight it. You better mark this down in your Bible. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Let's say it in... I know that's King James Version. Let's say it in Ladonia, Alabama Version. All right, y'all ready? How many of you can worry yourselves to death and make a difference? Nobody. Worry and worry and worry and worry and don't change nothing. It just makes you worry more. That's what he's saying. You know, I'm going to pick on Will and Crystal right here. Y'all, they had an answered prayer happening to them this past week. They moved down here. They had a home up there in LaGrange, Georgia. And they moved down here and it's kind of family own home and all. And I can't tell you how many times Will said, I don't know if we're going to have to pack up everything and move back to LaGrange to help take care of that again. We really want to sell it and get rid of it, but we can't. But I, I, I'm worried we're going to have to move back up there. 
And through a lot of prayer, we've been praying that God would take care of it. And then they get this person that wants to buy it, and they can't buy it because now the county and the city's wanting to rezone it and all this stuff. And they had to go to this court meeting. And the whole time, all of us are praying, Lord, please make a way. Please make a way. Guess what they did Tuesday? They closed on that property. It gone. That's right. God took care of it. God showed up. God showed out again. And all the worrying in the world wasn't going to fix it but prayer and trusting God. And God moved. Do you know you can worry about something till the cows come home and you're still going to be worrying. Ain't no cows going to be home. Y'all hear me? The best thing you can ever do is trust God. And that's what this verse right here says. He says, which of you... And like I said, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, right? Which of you can keep worrying and make a difference? No, you know what you're going to do? You're going to make your anxiety go through the roof. You're going to make your stress go through the roof. You're going to make your, your life miserable. That's what you're going to do. You're going to make your blood pressure start shooting up. You're going to take anger and fury and rage out on your family that you love. Because you are so stressed out about things that you can't control. And he's saying, quit. Stop. If you can make a difference, go make a difference. If you can't, trust God. Remember what Proverbs 3 says. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. You know what you do right here? You get to this point where you say, God, I have done the best I can. God, you know my heart. God, I'm trusting you. What else can you do? If you can do more, do it. But if you can't, let it go and let God. That's what God wants. Notice what he goes on right here in verse 33 and 34 though. Matthew chapter 6. He says, But seek you first... The kingdom of God. Now, I want to make a point right here because notice how he puts verse 33 above verse 34 and you'll see why I say that here in just a moment. But seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Let's put it another way. Seek God if it's not a a biblical thing, if it don't align with the Bible, leave it alone. Don't go that route. Don't try to cheat your way into a deal. Don't try to uh, fool somebody to get the deal you want. You do what the Bible says do. You treat people like you want to be treated, and you let God handle the price. Can I get an amen? Don't you cheat your way through. Don't think God's going to bless you after you just cheated somebody. You do what's right, and you let God handle the consequences. Right here, he says, seek the kingdom of God first. First, first, that's number one priority. Then, uh, and His righteousness. In other words, what's right? You can't say righteousness without saying what's right. Then, all these things, He says, um, shall come upon, shall be added unto you, shall come unto you. But when you go cheating and you go against God's will, don't think God's going to bless you. But then here's what He also says. But let's say it don't work out. Let's look at verse 34. Take, no thought, uh, take therefore no thought for tomorrow. What if it don't work out? Then God got something better. That was a weak amen. What if it don't work out? Then God's got something better. Praise God. Whoa, you take that piece of junk, God, I'm ready for mine. Amen. I don't need that evidently. There's something wrong with it. You got something good for me. Woo! Woo! I love it. That's what he's saying. You seek God. You're trusting God. You're doing things in a righteous way. God's got something big for you. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about what you can't control. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't you worry. God's got something better. And notice how verse 34 is after you have seeked Him and you are trusting Him. Then He says, don't worry about tomorrow. You know, I won't never forget, and I've told y'all this story, but it's so good, i got to tell it again. Amy and me were looking for a house. My parents found the perfect one. We thought. Perfect price range, great area. We thought. All of a sudden, we went to put in an offer that night. 
And the guy says, uh-oh, they does somebody else just put in an offer. So for three, four days in a row, God, please, God, please, God, please make it not work out. We want this house. Price range the whole nine yards. And guess what? It didn't work out. And all of a sudden, uh, but right before that, though, here's what happened. I had been worried about it sick for about three or four days. And I pulled up in my truck in my driveway at the place we were renting at that moment. And I said, God, this is hard to do, and you know it is, for me to do this. But God, if it not be your will, Lord, take that place. Lord, I believe you've got something better if this don't work out. Guess what? That night, that same night, he took it away. It was gone. It was off the table. A couple days later, Amy actually found it. It was like $20,000, $30,000 cheaper. It was in a way better location. And I thank God we didn't get the old house and we got the one we got. But that's what I say. When you trust God, and if something don't work out, you praise God because He's got something better in line. Amen? You don't worry. Notice what He says. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. You can't control tomorrow. You have no control over the, the things that may happen. But you can trust in God and God will lead God, direct you and take care of you. Notice what he says, for the morrow shall take thought for, keep going for me, things of itself, <clears throat> sufficient until the day is the evil thereof. You trust in God and let God take care of you. Now, this morning, I want to I do this, and y'all bear with me for just a moment. I want to, let's end this morning talking about Job. Now, I got several verses, but I'm going to try to go through them pr pretty quickly right here. Job was a man that had everything going for him. And then, I, I remember when my cousin entered the Marines, and this was 20 plus years ago, and the drill sergeant, I was kind of standing over there eavesdropping, and he was talking to my aunt and my mama and my nanny, my mama's mama. And I will never forget what that drill sergeant said to them. He said, we take all these young teenagers that think they know everything, they got everything figured out, and we break them down to nothing. And then we build them back up into some of the baddest machine, fighting machines there are. That's what he said. And I've never forgot about that. But then I got to thinking about that thought that kept coming to my mind as I think about Job. God let the ways of this world and Satan and what Satan wants to do with your life. And he showed us in the life of Job. He let Job get broke down to a point Job cursed the day he was born. He didn't curse God, but the day he was born. The fact that he lived on this earth. He was so broken and so lost and so empty. And right here, all his wife, now, and I will say this, for years I gave his wife a bad rap, but let me say this, she lost her kids too. She's going through a tough time too. So his wife is broken, understandably. His friends think they're know-it-alls. And have got his life figured out. You got any friends or family like that? Huh? They know all your problems, but don't touch theirs. They'll solve all yours. But then here's Job, standing alone, broken, Physically broken. He had boils on him. He's cast out. He's lost. He's empty. And God is now building him back up. And notice what God does. Notice what God says. Look at Job chapter 38. And Will's going to have all these verses for you. You just write them down and you go back and read them for yourself later. Notice what he says in chapter 38 verse 1. And I'm just going to start reading and we're going to talk about it um, for a second. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Notice God speaking to him. Y'all, the Bible says that he spoke to Elijah in a still small voice. He spoke to Job in a whirlwind. He spoke to Moses in a burning bush. There's no telling how God's going to come to you. You just be ready to listen. Amen. You just have your ears like, whoop, yes sir, Lord. Amen. You be ready to listen. He says, who is it? 
that darkeneth the counsel by words without knowledge. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Y'all, I'm going to tell you this right here. God don't play around. Y'all see what he just said? Get up and quit acting like a whoop, sissy, wuss, whatever. You are a man. Get up, clean yourself up, and act like it. You know, there's a bunch of men that need that nowadays. Y'all hear me? Matter of fact, if somebody I like to say, take that dress off, take that makeup off, put on some blue jeans and a t-shirt and boobs and look like a man. That's what God made you. And that's what God done right here. God said, get up, clean yourself up, and look like a man and be ready to answer me. That's what God says. God don't play. Y'all hear me? Notice what he said. Verse 4. Where wast thou when I laid the foundation of the earth? I want to ask you something right now. Where were you when God was creating the world? Who are you to question what God is allowing in your life? That's what he's doing right here. Who are you to think that you know better than God? Who are you to think that you have the capability of questioning God? That's what he said in the Job. Notice what he says. Declare, answer, if thou hast understanding. If you think you are smart enough to answer me, to think that I am foolish and I don't know what I'm doing and you've got more answers than God. That's what God's asking. Who are you, Job? Notice what he says. Verse 5. Who hath laid the measure thereof? If you know. He's questioning. He says... How big's the earth? How big's the galaxies? How big's the world? How big's the universe? Job. Do you have the capability of understanding these things? Y'all ever heard that old saying? Them, um, some people have told you, I forgot more than you'll ever know. Y'all ever heard somebody tell you that? Huh? That's what them old guys I used to work with say. You young whippersnapper, I've, I forgot more than you'll ever know. Well, right here, God's kind of saying, Job, I, there's no way. You can have the capability of the knowledge of what I've done. Not even close. Nobody does. Verse 6, whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? You know, you've got to have a building block to build the galaxies in the world, Job. Were you there? Do you know how I did it? How who are you to question me, Job. That's what he's saying. Verse 7. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut up the sea with doors? He's talking about the oceans now. Who, who stopped the doors on the, the, the water from flowing so that there ain't too much water? When it break forth as it had issued out of the womb. When, it, when I made the oceans... Uh, who told it to stop and when enough was enough when it was full? Verse 9. And who made the cloud the garment thereof, the cloud the skies, and the thick darkness and the swaddling band for it? Verse 10. And break up it for the um, deceased place, or decreed place, I'm sorry, and set bars and doors, verse 10. And then verse 11. I like what he does right here. And said hitherto, Shalt thou come, but no further... And thou shalt thy uh, and here shall thy proud waves be stayed. Have you ever noticed? Have you ever stood on the beach and noticed that the waves get to a certain point and they don't come in no more? Unless there's a hurricane, of course. But that's where we get our boundaries around the ocean from. Who told the ocean not to flow enough? Flow, come on in. It looks like at times it could just come on in the land. But he said, Who told the ocean that's far enough? I did, Job. Now look at chapter 40. Skip down, run through these right here quick, and then we're done, I promise. Verse 1. Moreover, the Lord answered Job again. And, uh, he's talking to him again in another speech. A lot had already went and took place where he questioned Job even further, but he speaks to him again. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? Notice that right there. He that reproveth God, let him answer it. Who do you think has the capability of reproving God? Who has the ability to question God? He's asking Job this. Notice how he left it. Left him with a question mark. 
He that reproveth God, let him answer it. I'm giving you an opportunity if you think that you know more than me. That's what God is saying to Job. Notice what Job does, verse 3. <laughs> Y'all, this is so good. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. You'll see that right there. You need to come to a point in your life where you realize I am nothing when it comes to God. God giveth and God... God can giveth you that oxygen you're breathing or God can take it away. God can give you this beautiful life you're living or God can take it away. God can give you that beautiful home you're living in or God can take it away. You ain't got to worry about the federal government. You need to worry about God. If God give it, not even the federal government can take it. Do not question God. Realize when you are speaking to God, you are in the authority, standing in the presence of God Almighty. And Job right here realizes, I am nobody to question you, God. I am vile. And then notice what he does. I need to learn this. What shall I answer thee? I will lay mine hand upon my mouth. Now y'all, y'all didn't hear that good. <laughs> I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Because this thing is stupid and it's faster than this. And ain't no telling what's going to come out. So I'm just going to put the, the floodgate on it before it gets ahead of me. Y'all ever put in open mouth, insert foot? I didn't know I was that flexible. Y'all know that? But I do it all the time. And Job right here is realizing I need to shut up while I can. God has given me the opportunity to whoop. And I, if I'm wise, I will not question God. Notice what he goes on to say. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer I made that mistake once, God. I won't do it again, I promise. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. Then verse 6. Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me righteous. Hast thou an arm like God? Verse 9. I want to ask you a question right here. Look at verse 9 with me. And Will, he's trying to get it. Who has the power and the authority and the ability of God? Nobody. Notice what God says right here. Who has an arm like God? Who has the power of God? Nobody. Your worst enemy don't. Satan don't. Your boss don't. Nobody. Your worst enemy is you. And not trusting in God. When you trust God, nobody is like our God. And that's what he's saying right here. Has thou an arm? Is anybody, Job, got a power like me? Is anybody like me, Job? No. Nobody. Or canest thou thunder with a voice like him? You know, I believe that even the biggest, baddest dude on the planet. You know, they got, uh, I think it's one of them fighting competitions, world lifting competitions, whatever it is. And them some big old dudes. They make Mr. Tony look like a midget. Them big old guys. I'm talking about big. And I pick up things like you. Like, you really pick that up? You can really do that? But I believe even when God speaks, they quite cower down. And they're scared to death. Because nobody has a voice like God. Nobody has power like God. In verse 10 and 11, he says, Deck thyself now with majesty and excellence. You are a child of God. Do you realize that? Don't beat yourself up. Don't think that you are not worthy. Don't think that God does not love you. You can't know and understand the love of God. There is no love like God's love. Notice what he says. Deck thyself now with majesty and excellence, and array thyself with glory and beauty. And then here's what he says, and cast abroad the rage of thy wrath. 
Job, get rid of all your mad and your angry because things didn't work out your way. I am God and I am in control. You know, the Bible goes on to say that God blessed Job with twice as much as he ever had before. And that when he died, his days were full, not empty. Go read the rest of the book. But listen to me. How many of y'all are going to change the worries and the problems you have with worrying? Not a single one of you. You know what I want to tell you this morning? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. There is nobody like our God. There, you don't know what love is, and God has some big plans for you. you look, I'm going to tell you right now, the dryer is going to break. The car is going to break down. Uh, Michael was telling me yesterday, he had to trade in a truck. Brand new truck! Kept breaking down, didn't it, brother? Had to get a different one. Brand new. Just because it's brand new don't mean it won't break down. Life's going to break down. People are going to break down. Jobs going to break down. Things going to come. Things going to go. But I'm going to tell you something right now. As long as you're anchored in Jesus Christ, you'll be fine. There ain't nothing that will come into your life that will destroy your life as long as you are anchored in Jesus Christ. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. There is nothing like a person that has a relationship with Jesus Christ that trusts in God with everything they have. You will not find a stronger, more loving, caring person on this planet. I challenge you. And that can be you too. Amen? Amen. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This morning, I want to ask you the most important question of the day. Number one, do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Do you know that you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt that heaven is your home? Will you raise your hand and say, I know it, Brother Jonathan. Praise God, hands going up all over this room. But maybe you sit right there today and you say, I think so. I hope so. Right now, the Bible is very clear in Romans 10, 9. That if you will confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, you shall be saved. What does that mean? It means you believe that you are a sinner. And that Jesus died for your sins. And that you need Jesus to get to heaven. The Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That was Jesus speaking. Jesus is your ticket to heaven. So will you, right where you sit today, will you pray? Will you believe? Will you trust Jesus Christ? Right where you sit. Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, I realize I am a sinner. And Lord, I'm asking you to please forgive me of my sins. Lord, please come into my heart and save my soul. Lord, I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Nobody looking around. If you prayed that prayer this morning, would you lift your hand? Anybody, anywhere, I'm looking. Praise God. If you're watching live or later and you receive Jesus, please reach out to us. We'd love to help you. We'd love to pray with you. This morning, I want to I ask you. You're the one going through it, not me. I want to ask you been worried about some stuff lately? Has life been overwhelming lately? You worried about your kids? You worried about your home? You worried about your job? You worried about your future? Let me tell you something. All the worrying in the world ain't going to change it. But trusting in God will. Trusting in God. Trusting in God's plans for your life. Trusting in God's abilities. I pray that we would all get broke down like Job. I pray that we would get to a point where we would quit arguing with God. We would quit trying to make deals with God. And we would just trust God with all of our heart. And let God lead God and direct our lives. I promise we would all be much happier. I promise we would be just like Job. We would live a full life.
because our faith, our hope, our joy comes from God. This morning, look, I don't know who this message is for. Maybe it was for me and me alone. But I learned this week another valuable lesson. I have, probably have to learn it again, but God showed me, trust Him. Lean on Him. Follow Him. And He's going to do some amazing things. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you this morning. And Lord, we're getting ready to open this altar. Lord, I believe there was some burdens carried in here today. Lord, I believe there was some worry carried in here today. Lord, I believe there was some sorrow and some pain carried in here today. Lord, I pray right now that you would touch these lives. Lord, touch mine. Lord, I know how great you are. I've seen it. But Lord, it is a struggle. It is a battle every day. And Lord, I pray that we are warriors for you. That we show this world there is a better way. There is love. There is um, a better, brighter future with a relationship with you. Lord, I pray that we trust in you with all our hearts. We lean not unto what we know, but that we're trusting you. Father, I pray that you move in some lives. Lord, I pray for uh, this church. Lord, I pray that you would do something incredible with us. And Lord, we love you. And no matter what, I promise we're going to praise you, Lord, because you are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody stand.